Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a client case study where I needed to create a very specific type of chart. As you can see in front of you here, what I needed to create and the output that I did build was a combo chart like this that has a stacked column chart with a variance bar for that grand total, plus also a line percentage overlaid on top of it, also with that having an error bar variance to compare that to another target as well. Now there was a few workarounds that I needed to do to be able to achieve this. It's all being done with a single native visual and a bit of clever DAX magic, but there's some considerations to get all of this to work together, at least with the version of Power BI that exists today. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI Desktop and get started. So I'll start by recapping what the output of this visual is doing what the client goal of this was. So I have two values. I have utilized and non-utilized. Those are the two values in here. And essentially it's a total number of values. And I wanna see how much of the utilized amount of that is eating into or growing into the total amount. So those two stacked together have a grand total. And that's why I actually added the outline here in the top is I wanted to turn this into a bit of a growth bar so it makes it seem like it's filling it up to a maximum of 100% utilized of that source value. Now, I also had a target from the client as well to compare against. So that is what that gray bar is. It shows you for the grand total of both utilized and non-utilized, how close is it below or above that value. So that's where that error bar is showing you that that this one is below that target. And here you can see that this one is above that target. So you can see where it has the core value going below or above those for its own target comparison for the actual value itself. Now, separately on the top here, I have a line percentage. Let's just call it a line ratio to be generic with it. That is needing to be overlaid. That is comparative to those base values. And that also has its own separate target. So we can see we have some error bars that show whether or not it is above or below any of those targets. I also added a bit of conditional formatting to call out the maximum value of the line and the lowest, but both basically have grand total values, both at the line and the column level and a comparative error bar value for both of those as well that's showing in here. And I tried my best to try to keep this as minimal and as simplistic as possible while still having all this data. And I think I got a pretty good effect out of this. But let's go ahead and walk through how to build this out and what I did with measures and a few other stuff. You might have even noticed I have an extra custom legend at the bottom, but let's walk through this. So the thing that we'll be walking through here is going to be a clustered column chart. Now, in a perfect world, I would love to be able to take what we have in front of us here, which is a stacked column chart. We have two subtotals equally in a grand total for these bars. But as of today in Power BI, unfortunately, if I wanted to add an error bar, I cannot do it on any type of a stacked column chart as long as there are multiple values showing. If I come to error bars, I have the ability to add it to my line, but I unfortunately cannot add it, as you can see in this list, to my columns. Now, if I come over to the combo chart start, this one is a clustered column. Now, if I look under my error bars, I can see down here, if I scroll down a little bit, I can add that to either of my values in here. So there's a little bit of a trick that we're gonna to do to get this to work. So what I have is my non-utilized and utilized. Those together give me a grand total, but let's watch what we're gonna do by stacking these together, having 100% overlap, and I'm gonna put the grand total in the background. So I'm gonna do a bit of reconfiguring of the visual. So my non-utilized, that is gonna to come to my tooltips, and then my total coming over to here, and I'm going to place my total in there as well. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to come to columns. One of the newer features that we have is called overlap. I'm gonna turn that on and make sure space between series is set to 100. And I just need to rearrange the order over here. So now they're stacked in front of each other. So technically the utilized right now is covering the amount that it has utilized in the grand total. And then that remaining showing at the top is the unutilized amount. So let's recolor the things a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my utilized amount, ensure that that screen is set, there we go. So I also want to ensure my total, I'm gonna to set the color to the red in the background, but I'm also gonna add 100% transparency to that and then go to my border, drop that down to zero, and let's make this a bit of a darker color, um, maybe a little bit lighter. So now I have a similar effect where it does 
have that same ratio, but now I have a single stacked column that was the combination of two of them that looks like a single one. And because I have my non-utilized in a tooltip down here, technically when I hover over this, I get my utilized and non-utilized, and if I hover over the top one, I get my grand total. So not 100% perfect, but it's really close, and my tooltip gives me all the points that I need on this. So getting closer to there, and now I can come to my error bars over here, and I can add to the total amount. I want a error bar enabled, and I'm going to add the field here for my value target. So that goes into the upper bound. There we go. And that's adding the error bar into there to show the variance against the columns themselves, which are working. Now let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to make this a width of 10. There we are. I'm going to turn off the border. I'm going to turn off the marker top piece, and then I'm going to make this maybe a bit of a lighter gray color. There we go, and get rid of the border entirely. And actually, I'll keep the border, but let's make that one shade darker, about, the, about there. So something where you want the bar not that visible, and maybe actually one less. There we go. So it's not going to bleed into the line too much, because a goal with a lot of this stuff that I want to do is to ensure that as this is getting built out, I kind of want the column data to be secondary to the line values. Now we do have the data label showing, so we need to clean that up a bit. Come over to data labels, ensure that total has the data label turned off. The only values that I want to see are the line values. But you can also tell is unfortunately now, even though the red is representing the non-utilized amount, I can't change the label in here in the legend because that will change the label in the tooltip. And technically, non-utilized is a separate smaller value than the total. So that is one reason that I leveraged a tree map and I just basically collapsed and crushed the, I move this out a bit, I used a tree map and I just simply collapse it. It's one of the visuals that I use that I find to be pretty easy to overlay like this um, onto the visual itself as a quote unquote legend. So that's my layering that I'm doing onto this. But otherwise, technically it is a single visual that is rendering all the data. So we do have the background objects now correctly showing the variance totals, which is good. But now I wanna to come to my legend and also add the variance to my line chart. So I'm gonna go down to error bars. I'm gonna to go to my value ratio percentage, turn that on, and I have my variance uh, utilization percentage target goal. Drag that into here, and then those add the little regular error bar markers to show how far that ratio percentage is off from its intended goal, above or below. Now, I'll leave that one as is. It looks different than the other error bar, and it helps to make that one seem distinct from the line itself. Now, there's a couple of other things that I can do as well. So the, uh, I did want to call out some values on the data labels. The, the mins and maxes help to uh, uh, sort through some of the identifying markers in here. So in that case, what I did under data labels, I went to data labels here. I'm going to go to the value section. And there's a few things we can do. Number one, f of x, I do have a min max month color. So I basically look for the max x across all months and years for that value ratio percentage and a min. And if it equals the max, I have a measure specifically to return the green color here or the red color. I like to just have measures that are referencing this. So that's simply just a green hex code, a gray hex code, and a red one. But this means that if you ever use that color in any conditional formatting measure, you will always have the same place to change the color logic. But that is returning either green, red, or a lighter grayish color for the values that don't meet that criteria. And just to note, I do need to ensure that I'm on the value ratio uh, data label. So I'm gonna set it to that one there, come to the F of X button, I'm going to go to field value, look for color, and min max color, select OK. Now it's close, but it's hard to tell the colors now of those. So let's go ahead and make that a bit more easy to see. Set that as a bold color, which then pops the colors out a little bit more. Um, the last thing that I'll say to do on this uh, to clean it up is you have a couple of other options. If you want to further reduce the data labeling and call out your mins and maxes, I have a similar logic in here which is checking the min and max and only returning the actual labels themselves if the min and max criteria are met, which if you really wanted to reduce the label density, so to speak, you could come into here and instead of the value ratio, put min max your value in here instead. 
and then all of those values except for the min and max go away. So one way to further strip back the report and the visual and clean it up even that much more. And the last thing that I'll say as a takeaway is when you layer any items like this, uh, it's good to group. So one thing is to make sure that these are grouped together. And then the last thing that I would suggest is to make sure that the visual itself has the property of maintain layer order turned on. So when you click it, it doesn't pop the legend into the background. But the final result here, it's a visual that I think works quite well to provide a lot of density of data without necessarily over complicating the visual. Uh, and it was something that, again, let me think creatively to figure out how to deliver this to the client because they had a very specific requirement for these ratios and variance comparisons onto it. So I'd be curious to know your thoughts in this video. And if you have any suggestions, as always, drop them down in the comment section below. Check out some of my related content here in the upper right as well. If you have any um, interest in seeing some of my other related content and otherwise, as always, liking, commenting and subscribing will continue to help my channel grow. And otherwise, with that being said, I will see you all in my next video.